Well, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Engineers Without Filters podcast. This is episode 25. I'm your host, Jacob Thompson, and tonight I'm drinking a Big Lake Brewing Raspberry Shandy. It's very good. I'm Joseph, and because we're recording this on um, Oberon Day. National Oberon Day, so the first batch of Oberon is out for the season, so I'm, yeah, I'm here with an Oberon. I'm Gabe. I'm still working through the Centennial IPAs. Slowly but surely. And I'm Dayton, and I'm finally uh, not taking a break from beer, and I'm <laughs> drinking a nice hams. Back on the wagon. That's kind <laughs> of like a break, though. I feel like it's it's I light enough. Well, I love how you got the break, and then you go to hams. Well, <laughs> I don't want to spend money on good beer right now. That's fair. I can't believe it's already National Oberon Day. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. Uh, I feel like it always comes out quicker than you think. Yeah. Well, you know, see, it's like, supposed to be like a summer beer, right? Yeah, it's like but it comes out in spring. spring. Yeah. yeah. So. so, like... Up here, it's it's kind of spring, but it doesn't look like spring. It's getting there slowly but surely. Yeah, like there's still a lot of snow. It's been sunny though, thankfully. Yeah, it's been sunny and it's been mid to high thirties to forties, mm-hmm. past like week or so. Mm-hmm. So I mean it. I feel like Oberon lasts a long. Like, I remember seeing it in, like October. Did yeah, I saw it like a, yeah a few months ago. <laughs> it's had some extra. Oh, just right. probably last yeah. year's stock that it kind of kept. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but just like. The only months you don't get it are the winter. So yeah. Like, it's a seasonal, but calling it a true seasonal would be, I don't know, a bit yeah. of a stretch. Well, people just buy hop slime then anyway. Yeah, because... <laughs> yeah. Well, no, they stop. I think they stop distributing it in, like, September. Yeah. Hmm. But, I mean, the, most stores buy more than... They kind of stock up. Right. Cause people it like sells. It. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. All right, well, thanks for listening, guys. Uh, remember, you can follow us on Instagram and Twitter at EWF Podcast, and you can find our podcasts on Spotify, iTunes, and SoundCloud. We might talk about those services later in this podcast. Who's to say? Uh, they, they've read the title already. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, no, it's a, it's a mystery. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, today we're going to talk about streaming services, just kind of in general, uh, because obviously, like, probably not the hot new thing anymore. Uh, but there's been some developments recently I want to I want to get to. But before that, let's kind of take a step back, back to, back in the day. All right, when we all use Pandora. All right. Oh, buddy, <laughs> dude. Like, what was what was your guys' first experiences with, like streaming services? Pandora, probably. Definitely yeah. Pandora. Groove Radio. Really? Or Shark Radio or Isn't something Groove like that. Still around? Groove was the Microsoft one. I'm pretty sure. That's still around. <sighs> yeah. No, nah, it was like Shark Radio or something like that. It was like something like that. It was, had like non copyrighted music mm-hmm. and it was like free to listen to and it had like only clean songs. Yeah. Was there any ads? Uh was I don't like, think so. It was non copyrighted well, music. Have, you mean open source? No. Yeah, so yeah, something like that. I listened to it in like seventh grade. Because okay. our tech teacher was like, listen to this and I'm like, mm-hmm. okay. Like, <laughs> yeah, I think Pandora was my first because I, I distinctly remember because uh, like I had an MP three player like most I don't know, I was like fifth or sixth grade. No, uh, actually I got it in like fourth grade. It's probably like half a gig space. It was four gigs, which was a lot at the time. Wow. Yeah. It was a nice one. I had an LCD screen. Damn. Because some a lot of people had the shuffles at the time, right? Yeah. You didn't have a screen with that. Yeah. Like, I had a SanDisk the... one. Oh, yeah. I think I might have had... I, I upgraded to the four gig one. Yeah, mine was only uh, a half gig. I carried I listened, two of them. I listened to, uh, <laughs> to Nickelback a lot oh, back then. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Nickelback man. and Hollywood Undead. <laughs> Those are the, the things I listened to in elementary school. They're still classic bangers. Yeah, uh, but I remember like seeing Pandora. I'm like, wait, so I don't have to pay for the songs, mm-hmm. and that's like what you know. Obviously, the the lure of it is, but mm-hmm. I know for me now, Pandora is a joke. Yeah, well, yeah, it's obviously a it's a joke. joke yeah. But like looking back on it, it At plays Emily's the same listening. twenty fucking songs. <laughs> yeah, you get the same garbage ass ads, and again, if you like. You can add taste or whatever, and they claim to use uh, the Music Genome Project or whatever. Yeah, I don't which know is, what that is. It's that's, some, that's what they base their, like... Yeah, they use an algorithm. algorithm to, that, like, oh, that's wrong. They're, so they're 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 a song, and it'll give it tags. So when you listen to a song with tags, it'll, like, match them up. Oh, yeah. okay. that's how it but what, what it always works out, no matter how much extra variation you had, it'll play the same fucking handful of songs. And the way Pandora works is they purposely give you the good songs in the beginning... Because they know you like it, mm. you know. So let's say we listen to like the middle school playlist, right? Or listen to Green Day. It'll play two Green Day songs because it knows you like it, and it's losing money on that song. But then it'll play the shit because that's where they make their money. 
They play music that they'll think you like. I'm making quotes, you guys. Uh, <laughs> that's just shit music, but it costs them nothing to license. Yep. So they start making money off of you on the shit. Because of the ads. Yeah, because mm-hmm. of the ads. And it cost them like two cents to license the song. Yeah. And you can't skip it anymore either because then it was like, well, you get like five skips. Yeah, in an yeah. hour. Mm-hmm. Or you could listen. No, that's Spotify. Yeah, you get so many skips an hour. And then... I was just in Pandora. You only have a certain amount of skips. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So well, I was thinking of like in Spotify where you can like listen to an ad and you get ad free music for an hour. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I, don't I feel Pandora like Spot or Pandora had something similar. I, I don't it, know if they had it where you could listen, but. Yeah. Back in the day, well, it was funny because our friend Emily we were talking to her and she still listens to Pandora because she has like her station that she curated. Where oh, she it's probably the same 20 fucking well, songs. Yeah, she liked the same, like, yeah. she liked all these songs and only plays those songs. But I'm like, Emily, you could just make a playlist in Spotify and just listen to those songs. Like, it's the same thing, except you have to see the songs. Yeah. Um, you know what's coming up. <laughs> yeah. I remember, like, when I first discovered Pandora, I was like, well, this is so awesome. And that's how I discovered a lot of music, like, honestly. I discovered a lot of bands through yeah. Pandora. Um, I discovered one of the first EDM songs that I ever started enjoying through Pandora. Yeah. Because I was listening to, to Skrillex Radio. <laughs> and this is when I was in like, I think, 7th or 8th grade. Yeah. And I was listening to Skrillex... Sorry, I say Skrillex Radio, but that's that's a meme. It's Skrillex. Um, and yeah, the... I think it was... I don't know, it was Pendulum. Not that anyone who's listening knows them, but... <laughs> They're, they're like a weird mix between drum and bass and metal mm-hmm. slash rock. So Okay, yeah. so quick question going how about a video quick. Was YouTube before Pandora? Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. YouTube was like two thousand seven. Yeah, because yeah. remember like uh like the Charlie video and Oh yeah. like Charlie the Unicorn. Yeah, and then like all those. The first like the Numa Numa. That yeah. was really old. The first I YouTube video I watched YouTube. my dad showed me and it was a clip of Jeff Dunham. Doing a bit. Oh yeah. <laughs> I wrote this thing. There's on my iPod Touch, like the built-in YouTube app. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah YouTube. Or the first like version of the. I think you could only go 240p. Or it yeah. might have been 480. For the longest time, you couldn't get 720. It was like it was longer than you'd think. Yeah. Like 720 already existed. See, I only remember the quality. I remember being fine. I was like, it was oh, always they're all yeah. square videos. I remember <laughs> the only reason I noticed is when I like, oh, that's a classic video. I want to go watch it, and then it's only in 480p. I didn't get into YouTube until like late high school because I don't have Wi-Fi at my house. Yeah. I don't have internet. Yeah, at my yeah house. mine was mine was too slow to do anything. So on, like in high school, I would download shows. That's why I had all like those. Yeah. Down oh, the right. But like, I never really followed any YouTubers. Like, I didn't have any. I didn't right. ha- use my YouTube account up until really college. Is did you? Like, you still like, but used it though once in a while, like at school and stuff. Yeah, I I didn't. I remember rarely though. I remember. I think I might have mentioned on the podcast before, but my high school buddy Jake, um, when I talked to him about a YouTube video, and he's like, I went on YouTube three times in my life. Really? And I was like, what? This is freshman year of high school. And I was like, what? Everyone uses YouTube. Yeah. Well, I don't think, I'm like, just, I didn't get, I didn't get into YouTube in a big way until college. Really? Like, I would like watch it every once in a while, but I, yeah, like, you know, I didn't follow any big YouTubers really mm-hmm. until college. Huh. Yeah. I really just didn't have the opportunity to, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, internet's too shitty. And then if I wanted to use my phone, like, you know, I'd have to use data on that. And, right. And so I'd watch like four videos of. A week. I watched a lot of um, Let's Plays. I just really? hung out outside yeah. with my friends. Uh, <laughs> no, I'd go to my cousin's house and watch whatever YouTube videos he had. Mm-hmm. I watched YouTube videos. Early, oh, yeah. <laughs> early, early YouTube for me. I listen to, or I watch a lot of Vsauce. Uh, oh, yeah. Some of their early stuff. I mean, I'm sure they still make good stuff, but like, yeah. they make good stuff. Mm-hmm. That and just Let's Plays. Those are the big things. I remember watching the uh, Crazy Frog Axel F music oh, video yeah. at my friend's house. Where he's yeah, pretending to ride on a motorcycle. Yeah. Yeah. That was a crazy video. Boom, boom. Bling, I think bling, the bling. reason I didn't get into YouTube when I was in high school is because I watched TV all the time. Like my mm. dad, he just watched TV like 24 7 whenever I was home. So I never like had the need to go on YouTube. But yeah. I know. YouTube has started. definitely changed. And it, it, YouTube wants to change so that they're more of like a. They want to be like a streaming service where you just keep watching and you get they get the money off the ads, you know? Yeah. And the content's definitely changed. Like, um,. The show on the on YouTube was that video game high school. Yeah. That show was huge for like the platform because they they showed that you can make TV shows on YouTube. Yeah. And they definitely like they picked up, you know, other big YouTubers and partnered with them to make shows. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, 
YouTube Red was, I mean, like, what's well, premium now? Yeah, but that kind of right. They it kind of worked for a little bit. I mean, they still have exclusive shows like Cobra Kai. Yeah, they're coming out with season two. But now I just saw articles say they're getting canceled. Oh really? Yeah. So it's like I don't know what happened. I think they're. I just heard an article saying they were like done with this trying to fight Netflix. Like mm. they're just pulling out of it. Well, let's get back to that in a second. Let's go back to music briefly. Mm-hmm. So, just in general, was Pandora the first like big one? Yeah, that I remember. I and then I used iHeartRadio for a little bit. Oh, really? Well, but you have to remember um, that before that it was like Napster. Yeah, but that was Nap- streaming though. I think it was pretty big for the streaming industry though, because it, it, show, it showed streaming. it showed them that like the current method of like getting music wasn't good. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's true. See, I think so kind of push I'm like, 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 like LimeWire. I was going to say LimeWire. My friends use LimeWire all the time to like get illegal yeah. music and stuff. Mm-hmm. But I feel like the illegal music that like probably has gone down a lot. Oh, See, the yeah. There's a really interesting relationship with that in all streaming services. And I mean, we can get into it later, but it's getting, it's starting to get worse again because all the streaming services are getting decentralized where like it used to be just Netflix mm-hmm. but now it's Netflix, HBO, Disney's doing something. They're splitting up. Yeah. So people are starting to pirate again. Yeah, like yeah. before when it's all, when you have the, people are willing to pay. Like you, you've seen it in the trends. Like you'll pay a couple bucks a month to listen or to watch it without having to deal with the hassle of pirating it. Yeah. But when you have a show that's split onto a different streaming service, yeah. like when you need to do three it. to four streaming services, you yeah. know, I think you got to keep track of whatever's there's on what. HBO, yeah. Netflix, Hulu, Amazon. Yeah, exactly. Amazon, Showtime's got some good stuff. Mm. But and when it comes to Disney when it comes to audio, they haven't seen it yet because you it's there's very no centrally exclusive. located. Yeah, right? There's, there's no exclusive yeah. music to certain platforms. Well, yeah. on Tidal, there is some exclusive, exclusive and like music. And like SoundCloud, but yeah. you don't have to pay to listen to SoundCloud. Yeah. yeah. SoundCloud's more just like an underground, might be a wrong word for it, but it's more people trying it, to get in. You it know? is It is underground, except then you also see that the artists will post like their entire albums on there, yeah. too. Yeah. At least... Aren't they supposed I, to be shutting I, down for like the last five dude, years? Dude, they, they've been in the process <laughs> of shutting down for like Spotify four years. Them. I didn't know that. I, I thought they were like sure supposed to be closing them. for like five years. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know. I didn't hear about that. I can look it up though. But yeah, but I mean, they, they've been struggling for money. Who was it? Kanye that's starting to pull his music off Spotify? And yeah. someone else. I mean, there are artists. I think ACDC is one. Yeah. No, it's Tool. I don't know if you guys know the grunge rock band. Oh, that's that sounds familiar. I, I feel like ACDC is a non... Um, Tool doesn't put their music on yeah. Spotify. And it's like one of the most pirated rock bands because of it. Like, yeah. They're like, they don't believe in streaming services, but people just do, because on Spotify, you can add music that isn't a part of their library and like make it look like yeah, it's yeah, part yeah. of it. Yep. Mm-hmm. So everybody has that just locally, like stored on their computer or whatever, on their phone. Yeah. Well, I think it's fair to say, I mean, like now Spotify is probably number one. I mean, yeah. Mm-hmm. So Spot- we'll accept, well, like, except for YouTube, we'll get back to that in a second. Spotify abandoned their attempt to buy SoundCloud. So oh, they really? so they tried to, but this was back in 2016. So this was like 3 years ago. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh two two and a half. Okay. Huh, so I wonder what they're doing then. But Joseph, you were with me watching that episode of Patriot Act about hip hop music? No. Oh yeah. And it was yeah. talking about Okay, yeah. So we're watching there's a show called Patriot Act on Netflix. It's like a political talk show, whatever. Mm-hmm. But there he had an episode about hip hop, but more specifically how hip hop has changed and now uh, people are, are mostly like coming up on SoundCloud, like we were saying, like they're trying to get discovered there. But on Spotify, songs are changing drastically. They're becoming a lot shorter because you're paid by the play, not by like oh, hours right. or minutes. So they're purposely making songs that are like around two minutes long so they can get more plays and then more money. So that's mm-hmm. why you're seeing like the rest of like mumble rap and just shorter hip hop songs in general because it's that's more lucrative because that's where the people are. But they also said, globally, YouTube is used more for music than Spotify or any other music really? streaming services because there's just, everything's on it. It's a shit app to like, listen to if you want to close it, though. Yeah. Oh, no. Spotify's a pain to, or YouTube's a pain to like listen to music. But on, on desktop, it's not. You just open it in a new window and yeah, just yeah. minimize yeah. it. Yeah, but you can't, I mean, it's harder. I guess you can create watch lists and like do yeah. it that way. I did that in high school. I yeah. have the uh, playlist on YouTube and I throw it in an incognito tab or something. And my cousin, what was I talking about doing that? But I feel like, I don't know, I guess our demographic, whatever that is, mm-hmm. white, <laughs> middle class college students, yeah. I think Spotify's number one. Yeah. Because it's the most. It definitely has a college crowd. 
I actually just texted my dad today about some song that like I knew he liked that got recommended on my feed. I'm like, oh, because we talk about we have very similar music tastes. So we talked about that, and he's like, oh, giving Spotify a try again. And then I'm like, it's you know, because he's been using Amazon Music or whatever. Yeah, I've heard Amazon Music, which isn't terrible. Good. But I was like, yeah, it's you know, Spotify is great. Like once you get used to it. And he's like, yeah, the interface kind of sucks for us old guys. <laughs> and I was like. It's not that bad. It's, it's, it's hard to, like, put yourself in their shoes because we've used right. it for so long. Like, we know it at the back of our hands. Well, and he finds Snapchat super daunting, which I totally understand. Snapchat is. Snapchat fucking sucks. The fucking yeah. menu is garbage, like... And there's so many hidden functions in Snapchat. Yeah. Just, like, I don't even know all the functions in that. But, like, I just love Spotify because it does everything. You can... Mm-hmm. If you pay for premium, which for students, like, five bucks a month. Yeah, really I, good deal. I'm... It's going to be different once... It stops because don't they verify whether you're actually a student? Yeah, but even then it's only ten bucks a month. Yeah, yeah it just double, and you still get Hulu with for free. So it's yeah. But anyway, you get make your own playlist, download music. Uh, there's still discoverability with radio stations and also your Discover Weekly playlist. Mm-hmm. There's you know genre based playlists, mood based playlists. You can search for any playlist you want made by other people. Like it's just. It's got everything. You know, I don't know if we were, like, friends when I first were in the dorms, so but I don't know if you guys remember, I didn't get Spotify until, like, a year and a half ago. Yeah, I didn't, oh, yeah. I didn't pay I had, for Spotify until me after. Me and Joseph Yeah, because you always just use it in a, in a I used, window. Yeah, yeah. And I, I was used, like, Joseph, what are you doing? I'd like, use the browser because I have a uh, ad, ad blocker. Block. Yeah, and then, and and then so you can you never can, save your songs. Yeah. Or, can, can you, you can't save download them? them. I couldn't download them. Oh, okay, yeah. So... I would so it's find my, my music, mm-hmm. in quotes, I'd find my music, and then I'd just play it, but I started getting annoyed with the fact that I couldn't, like, there was, like, some songs I'd like, but not the whole album, mm. but I couldn't add it, obviously, like, I'd have yeah. to select it, so I finally ended up buying it, and it's, like, totally worth the money. Dude, mm-hmm. I could never go back. Yeah. I don't think I'll never stop paying for Spotify Premium, because I'm just, I'm so far in, and it's such, like, a staple of my life now, I don't think I could ever go back, because I ever want to buy the music straight up and I wouldn't want to go out to ads or not being able to download and pick mm-hmm. you know my own thing like it's I just think, a fact of life at this point yeah I think the other thing that not just Spotify but especially with music uh, because it's streamable it's a lot easier to find so mm-hmm. like I was saying like before like you you know illegally download it or you have to buy the whole album yep it's allowing smaller artists to get more recognized and it's allowing everybody to get their own niches to where like pop and i don't know what the second biggest genre is but the country probably country, yeah. they aren't as profitable as like all of the other smaller ge- sub genres combined yeah. because everybody gets exactly what they want you know like when you listen to music i don't know even in like the 70s you listen to like the big two in the radio bands, channels in the radio or whatever whatever you find in the and that's what you store. found and you know if you got you know found some of the records were you listen to that. But now you can listen to exactly what you want. Dave can listen to his very specific, you know, taste. I can listen mm-hmm. to exactly what I want. Yep. And I, I, I know some of the, like, Joseph, the song that, that I showed you, the uh, Chong the Nomad song. Yeah. Bum Pelmo. I, I, like, didn't know who this person was. Actually, exactly. I'm, I'm pretty sure about probably 30 to 40% of my music, I have no idea who the artist is. Yeah. And I just, like, save it and I just, like, throw it in a playlist and I call it good. See, I think and that's, it's like it's a really good thing for yeah. artists and for consumers because you get exactly what you want, mm-hmm. and they get to get the audience that they deserve. Like yeah, if they're that yeah. musically talented. I was I was surprised that that person, that artist, had only like three thousand followers on SoundCloud or not on SoundCloud, on Spotify. Spotify. And granted, there's you're always gonna have more listeners than you do followers. Yeah, and I know like Spotify's taking some heat about like not paying their artists enough mm. and I don't know enough about that to like comment on it and mm. obviously want artists get paid as much they, as uh, possible but they posted a YouTube video in response to the Apple thing I don't know if you saw you that you told me about that yeah it's what's that amazing. so long I obviously don't know too much about it to like uh, say with complete certainty but from what I understand Apple and Spotify are in a feud over the way they're doing their apps Spotify has been trying to like push updates or whatnot mm-hmm. like faster and they've been trying to do certain things that Apple doesn't like so mm-hmm. Apple sent out a letter saying, like, you're fucking with us, like, stop. Mm-hmm. And Spotify thinks that, like, they're taking advantage of the fact that they're using the Apple ecosystem, and they're trying to, like, silence Spotify mm-hmm. so that Push Apple music, music looks yeah. more promising, mm-hmm. and they're, like, stunting their development, essentially. Huh. But, Interesting. I don't know. Obviously, they're two big companies yelling at each other. Yeah. But it's really interesting, because ne- I've never seen, like, two companies 
get that upset and like least, openly, but like, openly yeah. say it. I mean, I will say everyone that I know that has an iPhone, like most of my sis, all my sisters have an iPhone, and like pretty sure all their husbands do too. So like they all use Apple Music. Like yeah. not, no one in my family uses mind. Spotify. From what I've recognized, like because I've asked quite a few people that I know that have iPhones. And it's just whatever one they started using first. Yeah. When they started using yeah. Apple Music first. That's what they. Yeah. yeah. Or if their family has a family plan or something. That's yeah. What How much does that cost? Is it? Is it's it, pretty cheap. I don't it, remember the pricing exactly, but it's, I think it's cheaper than Spotify. If you have like five I, people on. I feel like if you're if you're buying Apple stuff, you're probably already a Which, sucker to yeah to pay more it, for their service anyway. Like, not gonna lie. Yeah, because if you, you have an iPhone, system, it makes sense. Uh, you know, there's a good chance you have maybe an iPad. Might have a. On a MacBook or mm-hmm. why not have them all sync? You know. Yeah, it's just super easy. And I think in the same way that, you know, Netflix is killing network TV. I think Spotify is killing radio. Like, why would anybody listen to radio anymore? When you just plug in your phone in your car. Yeah. You know. I still do, but it's only for a five minute. Commute. Exactly for convenience sake. But I like, don't know, dude. When I when my radio was working in my car, <laughs> my, my head unit. When you had a radio in your car. Yeah, because <laughs> now I don't. It's just an empty slot. <laughs> Um, that's because it got fried, but yeah. it, mine just automatically connected to Bluetooth, and then I set it up on okay. my phone, and it just picked up where it left off on Spotify. Yeah. So I didn't even have to do anything. I just started yeah. driving, and it played, and then I... Yeah. This radio so inconsistent. There's ads, and it's like, mm-hmm. why the fuck would I listen to this? I was just going to say... And like, then you get out of range. To me, it takes yeah. like 30 seconds to set up... Under 30 seconds to set up my phone and play music. Like, I don't have the feature with his phone that like it'll automatically play music. Yeah. But I get annoyed, because at 10 to 11, every day on my station... It becomes a shopping show, which is just garbage. <laughs> They're selling old people. Yeah. They're selling certificates, and I fucking can't stand it. Yeah. So I'll, I will take the time to play the music. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But even like just today, like just going to work, hearing the same fucking ad yep. that I've heard, I'm like, no, back to Bluetooth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cause, so. Yeah. I think radio is gonna die within the next twenty years. Cause yeah. I, don't, I don't know anybody. Else. I mean, old people listen to it still, but like our generation, like, why would we listen to it? Mm-hmm. I don't think I've used the radio in my car in five years. I was gonna say I didn't even hook my radio up. I've yeah. I, I I unplugged the cable. <laughs> I've like, debated taking the antenna off my car. Yeah, <laughs> I'm curious just because I don't use it. I usually have for safety reasons. Because there's like the the weather stations. You know what I'm saying when you're on highways. It's like tuning yeah. to like. I I never. What have you it? ever used? I don't the know. Antenna. I'm just. You can the passenger Google it, or you could just squeeze my phone and be like, "Hey Google." What if you're in the middle of the fucking weather? nowhere, like in the UP? I fall off the service. S- okay. You look in the sky. Yeah. At that point, <laughs> is, there, there, is, it, is your windshield getting wet? Must be raining. <laughs> <laughs> I will say there was one time I tried to use it when I was crossing like the Mackinac Bridge. Oh, because it gives you the. If it's yeah, windy yeah. and. But it's like Even at that so, point, it says on that on that same sign, on the same board, it says what the conditions. Yeah, are. and it's what am I gonna do? Turn around yeah. and just drive the <laughs> four hours back? Yeah, like no, I I'm there already, you know. So before we move on to video, I just wanna ask: Do you, do you guys think you'll ever stop doing streaming, or or do you think what's like the next step for music? Hmm. Well, I wanted to say super quickly. I think. So there's local radio, right? And then you just got yeah. Sirius Radio. Yeah. Which was XM, or XM got bought by them. Yep. Satellite and I'm radio. curious how, yeah, Satellite Radio. I'm curious how that is handling this. Because that, that was big for well, a bit. That was big for a really long time. Yeah. My, it's super nice. My dad has it in his truck. Yeah. The thing is, it, originally it was like you pay for the service and yeah. there's no there's ads. No ads. But there's... I forget if it's like they've gotten too big, like they've bought, like they have too many channels to the number of people that they have. So now they have ads again. Mm. Oh really? Yeah. I know so that. my dad's like, I don't want to keep using this mm. if like I'm paying to not have ads. Yet here I have ads. Yeah. Mm. I just don't understand because like, I feel like podcasts and Spotify can solve all of your needs. Yeah, I feel like vinyl new. vinyls are starting to come back though. Because that's more collector like item though. It, it um, is, it is, but I would argue it's still under the same thing. It's like they want to support the artist. Yeah, no, that's that's different. I'm talking about just like mainstream, how people are but, consuming music. Oh. The, okay, so I'm looking at the perspective of like my parents. Yeah. They don't want to mess with their phone while they're driving. Yeah. yeah. Like, my dad's got one eye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he can only spare so much vision to his phone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, so... He, he, it's convenience. You don't have to set it up. There's few ads, mm. and you won't lose service if you're driving mm. for a ways. 
Yeah, hey, but if you do it right, you just before you start driving, you just set it up and you put a playlist okay, that's already downloaded. His, dude, older people don't want to deal with that. I mean, yeah, yeah, but okay, it's but, the same thing. Like his dad, Gabe's dad doesn't want to get into Spotify. Just, okay, in fifty years, will we still be using Spotify? Or will I think another, new, I think there'll be another service. Yeah, another, ser- better, another streaming service or a whole other besides streaming. I no, I think that there'll be another streaming. Service. You guys remember that know. garbage R D I O app that tried to launch super hard? No, no. it was like two years ago. They advertised the fuck out of it, and it's already dead. Mm. But it tried to be. I never heard of it, so they never advertised very well. <laughs> it just tried to be Spotify, basically, but yeah. it just it didn't work. Plopped. Mm. I don't know. I I still I talked I've talked about it in the music episode, but I I still will buy albums on bands that I support, like mm. like that I like a lot. Yeah. Or I'll just like buy a ticket to their show. Mm. Um, just. You know, because that they don't make a lot of money off the Spotify, but they make a lot of money off the merch. The tours, merch, yeah, merch is huge. Merch tours and album, like physical yeah. sales. That yeah. it's really great for the consumer, but yeah, you know, money. All right, let's move on to video. So I mean, we talked about YouTube briefly. YouTube is kind of a weird spot because it's free, um, unlike the other ones. Yeah, it's filled with fucking well, it's ads. Well, because it's it's user created. Yeah, it's user generated content. Um, which we can talk about that in a little bit. But let's start talking about like Netflix, Hulu, um, Amazon. HBO. I had a good How many anecdote are there? about audio or music. Do you want to say quick? <laughs> I mean, I can. I just thought it was funny. So my mom has an iPad and an iPhone, right? So she uses Apple Music. I don't know if she like pays for Apple Music. I think she does. But she's like, I found out I can download the music so I don't need to stream it. And I'm uh, like, yes, mom. That's exactly what we used to do 10 years ago yeah. before streaming was good. And it's, I just thought it was funny that it was like, you know... It used to be downloaded, <laughs> yeah. and then everyone moved to streaming, and now it's like, but my internet's still shitty yeah. Yeah. that yeah. I have to resort to downloading yeah. to listen to music. Right? Yeah, that's, 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 a, yeah, that's a funny uh, turn of events, but I think with video, they never nobody had downloads video anymore. It's all streaming, because the, the files are too big. Yeah, I mean, it, it basically just scaled the resolution as time went on. Like I was saying before, yeah. Spotify, or Spotify, well, YouTube was only like 480p tops for like yeah. years because it's just less data to send to the mm-hmm. user. Yeah. Now YouTube has 4K video because gigabit internet is a thing. Yeah. <laughs> Fiber internet is a thing. Like you can, you can swing that. Yeah. I think the biggest point, at least for me, about uh, video streaming is that it's killing cable. And I I hope it fucking drives that shit into the ground. Yeah. Like honestly, it's yeah. it's because I think like I said, our generation is changing things where nobody our age watches cable on a regular basis more than they do. Netflix yeah. or Hulu, I don't think. At least the Garbage. vast majority. Because, like, first of all, network shows are shit. Let's be honest. Mm. Uh, I don't know. The Big Bang Theory is pretty <laughs> top tier. <laughs> There's a bunch of fucking ads. The only argument I can... Oh, the news is garbage. Cable news is fucking garbage. The only argument I see is sports. That's the only thing that's like the last remnant of cable I could see somebody having it for. They have it streaming now, though, too. Esports are going to dethrone real sports. <laughs> Mark my words. Hey, go back two episodes and you're out of esports. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think, especially like cable news and cable shows, like they're just garbage. They're complete garbage. I don't know. If I have the choice to, like, so cable plays a ton of fucking reruns, yeah. there's ads. Yeah. I can pick exactly what I want to watch, and there's no ads. Yep. Yeah. For a small fee, like, fucking yes. Yep. It is that simple to me. And even having free Hulu, which still has ads, the ads aren't that bad. You can see exactly how much time you have left before the show gets back, which and is And I really pay nice. five bucks a month for it, and Spotify. Yeah, so I'm not going to complain. And I get Showtime, right? Yeah. 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 Like, it, it, to me, that's just a, a complete no-brainer. Like, yeah. the shows are just better. Yeah, exactly. And like you're saying, you pick what exactly what you want, and... I think what's really nice is the stand-up comedy also. You yeah, know? I was just going to say, there's Comedy's times where, like... like, coming back. Like, oh, yeah. Like, it's mm-hmm. becoming... I mean, it was always big, but it's it's becoming more mainstream, I think, now. I think it's fair to say Netflix, like, resurrected stand-up comedy, single-handedly. Well, I don't think comedy was dying, necessarily. Yeah, but it, like, brought it to so many more people. Mm-hmm. Yes, you know, like, I totally... No, nobody was going out to shows. We well, probably yeah. wouldn't... He's seeing Burt Kreischer and without the Netflix special, no. Yeah, I've never seen his Netflix special. We oh, watched well, part you of it. Watch it. It's fucking hilarious. I, I haven't. I, don't I feel like we've seen part Wait, of it. Wait, then how do you you know from the podcast? Yeah, okay. I only know him from podcasts. Yeah, and I think he's fucking hilarious on podcasts. So I imagine when he prepares, he's even pretty more, similar. He's gonna be like he's pretty funny. similar. Yeah. On this I can't guy. wait to get a, a sh- picture with our shirts off of him though. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, because he always does meet and greets. Oh, does he? Yeah. yeah. 
Oh, yeah. He always does meet and Dude, greets. my pale ass is going to have such a big glare on the photo. <laughs> <laughs> We're all going to have to stick our bellies out, too. Like yeah, because he he's got a huge gut. He's got a humongous gut. And we are... <laughs> What, there's five of us? Josh is the only one with any sort of gut. gut. <laughs> <laughs> I can stick mine out. Like, am I like... Yeah, everybody can stick it out. Like, look at that. Look at that right now, dude. That's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> so, I know that me and Joseph watch a decent amount of, like, Netflix and stuff. Mm-hmm. I know you don't, Dayton. I can't even remember the last time I opened up Netflix. Exactly. Gabe, I don't know how much you watch, though. It depends. I think my hobbies rotate pretty quick. Mm. And, like, right now it's all on Apex, so that's where a lot of my free time goes. Yeah. But uh, lately, like, for lunch, I'll, like, watch a comedy special on Netflix or something. Mm. I mean, I've watched, like, the, the Staples, you know, I've watched The Office or whatever, and, like, the other big shows. Um, but depending on my mood for lunch, sometimes I'll I'll watch, like, a, well, I'll watch, like, a nature documentary some days. Maybe I'll watch Planet Earth, because mm. that shit's fucking amazing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. Uh, and other times I'll just watch, like... You know, I'll watch a comedy special. It depends, like like I said, I depending on my mood, I can watch whatever, whenever, from my phone. Yeah. And like my, I have a family plan with my parents, so yeah, I don't pay for it. So that's not a good point too. Is like documentaries, I think, have really surged recently. What's that mockumentary that I just fucking? What's it about? American Vandal. Yeah. Yes, dude. American that, Vandals. I, never. So I remember the last time I opened Netflix. It was Christmas break. Yeah. Yeah, I that show you watched yeah. Seinfeld too, didn't you? That's on Hulu. Yeah, that was, that was Christmas break. Well. Christmas I just remember break. like Christmas break. I'm like, wow, we're bored, and I told Patty about someone telling. I think it was you guys that mm-hmm. told me about it. I'm like, it seems fun. Let's just watch it and like just binge it. American Metal is so, so fun, good. dude. Mockumentaries yeah. are an underrated genre, dude. They're right. fucking. Hilarious. They're they're hard. They're hard to do. Well, yes, yeah. but there's some solid ones. There's that one, Seven Days in Hell. Seven Days in Hell. I haven't seen season two. Is amazing. American Vandal. That I mean, I mean, it honestly it rivals it. Like, really, real well. I heard it wasn't as good because it didn't have the same like it didn't have the same uh, guy. What's his face? The main oh. the main character of season one. The Jimmy. bad or bad. Guy yeah, the guy who always wears the carrot shirt. Yeah, yeah, because he's hilarious. He is. He is. Except, I don't know, dude. They 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 done did it. <laughs> they done did it. <laughs> But yeah, if you have HBO, watch Seven Days in Hell. It's a 45-minute mockumentary about a seven-day-long tennis match. And it is oh, fucking hilarious. Wait, yeah, we, we watched, watched that. that. Yeah. yeah we watched that. it at Perkins' house, didn't we? Yes. Yeah. 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 It's fucking hilarious. There's also... It's got Kit Harrington and... Andy oh, Sandberg. yeah. Andy Sandberg. Yeah, 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 Andy Sandberg. Yeah. It, it's got... It just doesn't sound entertaining it's enough got for 45 minutes. Serena Williams. I, I sat through it. Really? Yeah, Serena yes. Williams did it. It's Serena Williams and uh, John, John, John McEnroe does the oh. commentary. <laughs> oh my god. It's He's so a big fun. tennis player. I had to jam. So, I know who Serena Williams is. John McEnroe right. used to be like this huge tennis player. And he was, fits. Yeah. he was famous for just screaming at the line judges and like arguing with them. And like just, he was like the bad boy. Like it was this yeah. whole ordeal. He was, he used to be great. But dude, yeah, Seven Days of Hell is fucking hilarious. They also did one called Tour to Pharmacy, which is Tour de France, a mockumentary about how everyone just fucking does drugs, and it's really good. Wait, did we watch? Did we watch that one too? I don't know if we did. It's it, Tour de France. Everyone gets DQ'd because they all did. They all blood dope except for five people. I think we did watch that one too. Yeah, that one's that one's not as good. But John Cena's in it as one of the bikers. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then another one is What We Do in the Shadows, which is by Taika Waititi who directed oh. Thor Ragnarok, and it's about vampires in New Zealand who try to, like, live a normal life, and it's really good. Oh, that's right. You were watching the trailer for that one. Oh. That, they're making a show out of it. Oh, maybe that's what Yeah, it yeah, they're making oh, a, yeah. a show on FX. I think this goes back to my, my point before the audio, where, like, with streaming services, you're allowed to bring up, like, it It allows those subgenres to grow, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you can watch, well, they bring them to the... You know, the, the forefront so you can see them yeah well network yeah. tv like there it's a whole like we're a company we have a face we're family friendly yeah. and they have, to, they have to fit such a huge swath of people where it's like yeah. big bang theory it's like oh this is marketable to like somewhat nerds this is marketable to like lay people this is marketed to like everybody yeah, you yeah. can get that niche with you know streaming services and like yeah. I've and heard... it's not set at a certain time it's not like five o'clock that's on what Mondays. i hate the most yeah. it's like I'm not setting my schedule on a damn TV show. I like, think the saying. only TV show I ever did that for, well, I guess the so two shows, The Walking Dead mm-hmm. 
and uh, Game of Thrones. I was going to say, yeah, I've done it for Game of Thrones. Those are the only two TV shows I've ever, like, but, oh, it's, what, Sunday at 8, at 10 o'clock. 9, I think. 9 or 10 Sunday o'clock. Sunday at 9. And honestly, the biggest thing for me is binging. The fact you don't have to wait a week for the next episode, you can just watch it, which has led to some really late nights with me, but honestly, I love it. You're going to be really disappointed when Game of Thrones comes out. Yeah. <laughs> this last season is going to be well, rough. <laughs> I, I read um, an article about this person who tried to watch... This is when Orange is the New Black was big, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. They tried to watch Orange is the New Black as if it was a network TV show. One episode a week. So they would watch one episode a week, and they said it was the hardest thing they have ever done. Because you can't remember any of the characters. Because like, mm-hmm. usually there's like a wrap-up or like a, yeah, yeah, an yeah. intro thing where it kind of reminds yeah. you what happened last time. Fuck, Game of Thrones has to do it. Oh, yeah. yeah well, like, I mean, that's... The best thing, all the week. Netflix original shows are designed to be binged. That's yeah. why they don't have that stuff. It's because they assume yeah. people yeah. are going to binge watch. And like it, it, they don't um, hint backwards at things yeah. nearly as often. Mm-hmm. There's and literally so, a bit in the show Big Mouth that like says, I bet you're binging this right now. Yeah. Like, they address that you're binging it. Yeah. Because that's how it's meant to be watched. Yeah, but I think the combination of streaming services and YouTube will kill network TV. Because like I said, if you can't find it on Netflix, Hulu, Amazon, or Hopefully. HBO, it's on YouTube. It's fucking expensive. And, or you what, what college it. students... Can you name that have co- or, uh, cable in their house? Exactly. Like, none. Dude, they I might remember, have an antenna, maybe. I remember Cooper was like, let's get it cable. And oh, yeah, we, we all shut him down. All of us were like, no. Yeah. Like, I've never the only it. reason, because we, like, as students, we got access to HBO, and the only reason all of us used it for was Game of Thrones. That yeah. was it. You yeah, know, you can just buy I that think, standalone if you really need to. It's 10 bucks a month or whatever it is. Right, but, like, we got it for free as, as long as you were yeah. on campus. Yeah. Like, on their network. And it, I, I think maybe we watched some football games or something, like the Super Bowl. Probably. Super uh, freshman Bowl year, I feel like we did more because... Um, well, we got it for free. Yeah, so it was like, yeah, why not? But YouTube is just huge. Like, I remember the when I was the most into YouTube was on New, in New Zealand. Mm, I was yeah, yeah, for, I was... I was because we didn't have TV, right? I don't know any of the shows there anyway, you know? So I come home for lunch, and I always put on, like, Phil DeFranco show because I want to know what was going on, like, news-wise. So I'd watch that over lunch. Mm-hmm. And then I'd, you know, watch, I like a bunch of, you know, channels I follow. So I'd watch other new videos and then go about my day. And I would do that instead of TV. And then when I get home, maybe I watch Netflix before I go to bed. But, like, mm-hmm. YouTube, like, can supplement anything you want. You can get any information about anything. And you can find the creators you like and support them and stuff. And it's great. I burn through YouTube, man. That's how I keep up on all the computer news. Yeah. Like, all that stuff. I mean, there's also tons of comedians, or comedic type of stuff we all listen to, or watch, but... Yeah. I don't really watch any comedy. I watch a lot of YouTube. (laughs) (laughs) It's a problem. (laughs) But would you ever, this thing, would you ever buy YouTube Premium? Would I buy YouTube Premium? Yeah. And that's not worth it for me. Exactly. Like... Because you can get it for free, and the ads aren't that bad. Yeah. Ad blocker. And I know ways around it, so it's like, what's the point? I don't even know how much it costs. Like it's five a month, probably. Five or ten, yeah. Yeah, I can easily get around it. So it's like, what's the fucking point? Yeah, but here's the thing: like when we when we all graduate, we all live where we live. I doubt any of us will buy a cable plan or a phone plan. It's a waste of money. Yeah, you have your cell phone. You use by internet. I will say, like the the rise of streaming services has fucked over us as far as the internet goes because the companies have pivoted. To supplying internet and they're just terrible companies yeah. who are trying to squeeze everything they can get out before their company dies. Yeah. So they're just like complete assholes when it comes to their internet policy. Well, what's gonna happen though? Because I feel like ISPs like are gonna be around for a long time. Well, the the until it becomes a utility. Yeah, I was gonna say, eventually it should become a utility because if you can it'll s- become necessary. Yeah, if you. Can tell me right now that like kindergartners can't survive without the internet to get like go from like kindergarten to getting a professional job without the internet right now you're yeah. a fucking liar yeah like you just need it at this point yeah but it, there's encyclopedias <laughs> exactly okay, but there's always it's gonna odd. this is just a counterpoint to you there's always gonna be the cultures like the Amish and people like that but they still do have limited access to the internet mm. if it doesn't affect their day to day life but I feel like the Amish make a lot of money by selling their products and they probably market that online. Right? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like they, they can still they can still use 
modern technology they if it doesn't can't. if it doesn't affect their day to day life. Yeah. If it helps their business, then yeah, they can use it. But if it's like if it's affecting them, yeah. Yeah. Then yeah. they don't use it. I mean, I, I get it, but I, I still think that overall, it's more it's just as utility as much as electricity is at this point. Yeah, it just incredibly useful. I mean, obviously there's shit on the internet, but you f- we can see where like countries that have little access to the internet are like you know China with the Great Firewall, mm-hmm. like where their knowledge base is compared to ours. Like they just have complete misconceptions of things. Yeah, because they don't have access to that type of North information. North Korea, least exactly all brainwashed. Well, in, like, China, they can't even look up, like, any of their protests or whatever. The, the it. Tiananmen Square. It'll shut yeah. off their, yeah, it'll shut yeah. off their internet, like. Yeah, there's a great, again, plug, Patriot Act episode about censorship in China. That's really interesting about, yeah, the Great Firewall and stuff. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I just think, again, 50 years, cable's done, man. If not sooner. Hope so. Because, like, nobody our age is going to fucking buy cable. And all of our parents will eventually die. Unless they get uh, a... But I'm just saying, like, <laughs> Wait, the, really? Spoilers! The, the older generations will die, and we'll be like, yo, we're not paying this anymore. And the, the thing about cable is they scrape so hard to stay alive. Like, when my parents try to cancel it, they've talked about cutting the cord in the past, like, two years. Mm-hmm. Every time they go to do it, they, like, offer some new deal that's cheaper. Yeah. They'll do anything to keep you on the you're, fucking thing. If you have cable, you're supposed to call them, like, every few months and just say that you're going to quit. Yeah, because then you get a better deal. Mm-hmm. It's ridiculous. Yeah, and They I, keep I, more channels and stuff, and it's... Yeah. You know, I feel like the only way they could survive is if they somehow talk the next generation past us mm-hmm. into keeping it. But I don't see that happening because all the little kids I know use YouTube for all of their entertainment. YouTube and then, and then video games too. And Twitch. Yeah, exactly. Twitch yeah. Is and huge. Twitch is super big with the younger audiences. Yeah. And I mean, even our audience, but like, I'm not a big Twitch No, person. I think younger I, than us is when I'm When I'm back home, I used to watch a lot of Twitch. If I'm, like, not doing anything, Twitch is entertaining, but... Yeah. Well, especially now that the Chromecast exists, you don't need a smart TV to watch all stuff like the big screen. You know, yeah. you, you go on your laptop, and you watch your phone, you can watch anything you want, in the, like, in your living room for $30. One-time payment. Yeah. And you can stream everything to your TV from your phone, and has, that's your remote, you know, you are starting to buy you anyway. You'll have to, like, find the remote. It's your fucking phone. I mean, most TVs at this point are smart TVs, too. See, yeah. except I've, I've used quite a few smart TVs, and the thing that I don't like about them is the hardware. The hardware yeah. is a lot of times laggy. It's yeah. really shitty. And then in three years, it's going to be outdated and it's going to be slow because the software will be written to use the modern day hardware. Yeah. yeah. And that's going to make the three-year-old TV I think it's TV fucking hilarious you have to update your TV. Like, it's just such a funny concept. You yeah. update our toasters in 20 years, dude. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. But it just like... I just, I just. It's want, just like your phone. It slows down in two, three years. Yeah. You got to get another one. I, I just mm-hmm. think that I would much rather have a... A dumb TV with the a Chromecast modular, equally, with, like, like, yeah. with like a Chromecast that you can just replace when that hardware becomes obsolete instead of replacing the entire thing. And you can bring that Chromecast to fucking anything. Yep. Like if you have a shitty monitor this laying around, you can plug it in. Mm-hmm. It still works the same. Yeah, yeah. it's just an HDMI. Yeah. And if you buy the premium Chromecast, the Chromecast. Yeah, the 4K or yeah, whatever. Yeah, it's 60 bucks and yeah, you get 4K streaming. Yeah. So it's like, dude, you're... Well, why would you ever buy a cable box or anything else? Like, you can do anything for $60. Well, and then they, they charge you, like, monthly for the box itself. Like, it's just yeah. straight up stupid. Like, yeah. why am I have to pay five bucks a month for that piece of shit mm-hmm. to sit on my fucking TV? Yeah. The only thing that I'm worried about with streaming is, like you're saying, Gabe, the fragmentation. Okay, I want to watch every show that's out there right now. I need to buy Netflix, Hulu, Amazon, HBO, uh, CBS All Access... FX now, yeah. you know, there's just every fucking network now has Disney's their own streaming thing. Out of Net, yeah, Disney Plus. Well, which is weird because Disney now owns sixty percent of Hulu. I don't know what's gonna happen with that, but they also have Disney. I don't Plus know why they put it. On. Well, mm-hmm. the new Star Wars, the Clone Wars, last couple seasons are coming out, but they're coming out in the Disney Plus thing. Yeah, we're not paying for that shit. It's not know. happening. I'm either getting a free trial. They're, they said they're gonna put every no, Disney dude, movie ever. Sounds like you're gonna start sailing the seas. I I oh, will. There's, <laughs> there's a DC universe which I need to get to watch Young Justice at some point. Yeah. Like at some point you're paying ten bucks a month for everything, and at so one point does that become cost prohibitive? No, it does. It becomes more than than. But that's I'm also just that's start also the, a peg leg to watch these things. <laughs> <laughs> that's also oh, the yeah. argument where I was saying you watch exactly what you want when you want. Yeah. And it becomes so fragmented where it's like, oh, I want to watch this. Oh fuck, I have to pay another ten bucks a month. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. it was super convenient when it was all in two places tops. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's happening in video games too. You have yeah. Steam, 
Steam has like you know a lot of different video games, mm-hmm. but then you have Origin. You, you have Battle.net, you play thing. Epic Game Store. Epic Game Store. You have all Discord. like these all these does Discord have games now? Yeah, they do. They have a store now. Wow, okay. They have exclusive that. games. Well you see that even Xbox is doing streaming now. Well we're, we're gonna get there. No, we're, I'm saying like yeah. subscription fee. Not streaming. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Sorry, streaming's the wrong word. They have a subscription fee where yeah. you pay so much and you can use their whole library. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think Well it's not the whole library, it's their stuff, curated library. Right, which is a majority of their good shit, yeah. which is very little games. And you're thinking of EA All Access. EA has. Played. Yeah, yeah, that's what it's yeah. called. But to me, I don't know. That, but that's a different it, story than media for me. But with let's go back to video quickly. Is that still cheaper than what you're paying for cable? Not and the that, end. I don't know. I don't, I don't think know. So. You could probably cable. buy about four before it becomes yeah. too expensive. Yeah. But then again, you probably only need four. And like Gabe said, let's say you buy four, then you like torrent the other shows you really need from the other platforms you know or maybe you buy hbo for only the months that game of thrones is out or even just after it comes out you binge it all in one week and then cancel it you know it's yeah. like you can get work around that stuff if you really want i don't to. know dude tv is not worth 40 bucks a month to me i pay 40 a year and i get whatever i want <laughs> 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 this podcast sponsored by nord <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so yeah let's let's then hop into the gaming so gaming has always well not always gaming has been in the recent years you buy a disc, or you buy a code, and it's downloaded onto your or your cartridge. console or cartridge. Mm-hmm. You know, it's old school gaming. You hey, buy switches still have cartridges. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cartridges well, I'm still. thinking like N64. But yeah, you buy either physical media or your game has to be downloaded onto your system. There's no streaming. Mm-hmm. A few days ago, Google announced Google Stadia, which is their new streaming platform, which can you can run any game on their platform on your phone in a browser on a Chromecast, any Google product. You can just stream the game, and it's all power using their data centers, mm-hmm. so your, your device isn't doing any computing. And Microsoft and GeForce are doing the same thing. Microsoft is going to announce their streaming service at E3 this year in July. NVIDIA already like talked about theirs. Yeah, but nobody cares about NVIDIA. <laughs> I feel like... Are you kidding me? They're the biggest graphics card seller in the world. Yeah, but I feel like nobody uses them for games. You know? They use them to play them. Yeah, but they don't actually... I don't know. I have I've heard of NVIDIA's streaming service, but... the. But the big ones are Google and Microsoft right now. Yeah. Are pushing streaming. There's also like you're saying the subscription services. There's already Xbox Game Pass, which ten bucks a month you get an essentially library. unlimited supply of games. Yeah. Uh, there's EA All Access, which is fuck EA, <laughs> and then <laughs> Apple today had an event and they announced Apple Arcade, which is going is to that be just apps or is it like it's a PC game? Okay, so it's on their devices, so on iPhones, oh, iPads, so it's already limited Macs, and. Apple TV, right? On their devices, it's a new section of the App Store. It's subscription based, so how much a month they not didn't announce the price yet. And it's gonna be curated games. Maxi's joining us. <laughs> it's gonna be uh their curated games and it's gonna be their premium games, no ads, theoretically, no micro no microtransactions. So in theory it should be better for parents, because parents can pay this how much a month for their kid and they, and they don't have to worry about their kid spending a hundred bucks on V bucks or they could just you know add a thumbprint and stop it all together but you know parents are dumb um, <laughs> but anyway yeah so it's just a flat fee every month and you get this supply of quote unquote quality games which sounds pretty good I mean the games that showed off today looked pretty good they're from pretty they're respected gonna show developers the best ones. exactly they're the best ones and they're supposedly gonna be curated so they shouldn't be some garbage ripoff game theoretically but that's their new deal. And the argument I was telling Dayton about is like, why would they do this? It's like, what's like the big appeal? The big appeal is, is install base. So let me walk you down some numbers, Joseph. All right. All right. So as of right now, there are 32 million Nintendo Switches out in the wild. Mm-hmm. All right. So if somebody releases a game, they could sell theoretically up to 32 million copies of it. Mm-hmm. That never happens. It's but, just never going to happen. But that's like their maximum number they could sell, right? Yeah. Also, right now, there are 92 million PS4s. So, really? again, if somebody sells a real... Finds this a, thing's been out forever. They've been out for, like, seven years, so it's been a long time. Probably more than that. I don't know. But if somebody sells a game, they have theoretically the ability to sell 92 million copies or more. And GTA V has done about that. GTA V is fucking insane. Guess how many iPhones there are on the planet? It's probably, like, 200 million, at least. Yeah. Probably more. Two to three hundred million. Wait, are we talking? What On generation planet, are we talking about? Any iPhone, any Apple iPhone. Oh, then there's easy like six hundred, seven hundred. Seven hundred million iPhones. Okay. Yeah. Well, is that like? Right see, okay. That's just like I total just, sales ever. 
I just I just pulled this up. Okay, so Apple sold two two hundred fifteen million iPhones in twenty seventeen, and then this is only estimated for Android smartphones in twenty seventeen one point two four billion. Everything runs Android, but here's I think the the difference with between Apple and Android in this situation. Again, it's seven hundred million roughly iPhones out in the wild that mm-hmm. they can sell to. As you said earlier, Dayton, people who buy Apple products are in the Apple ecosystem. They're kind of locked in, mm-hmm. right? They kind of have to do what they want to do. A lot of people, they said some stats today on, on the Apple event that the App Store, or Apple products are like the biggest gaming platform if you look at mobile games. Like, technically, they're the biggest audience who wow. games. Because if you of, can call them games. If you can call them games, which you can. I mean, Candy Crush is a game. Yeah, you know. it is. There's I PUBG know. Mobile uh, and <sighs> Fortnite Mobile. Yeah. I, I just don't think people are using Android phones to game as much as people are on Apple. I don't know why that is, but that seems to be the case. But anyway, they have somebody releases a good game in the App Store, they have potential to sell 700 million units, which is fucking insane. The install base is just exponentially greater than any other gaming platform. And that's why these developers are making mobile games. I just told you that the Android device... Yeah, so people don't game on Android as much. That's, that's the okay, problem. So I don't what, know why. what if you think that Google Stadia... What if you think that... Is like, even if it captures fifty percent of that, it's still six hundred million. But the problem, the difference is, I would say, again, the Apple Arcade I'm describing is not a streaming platform. It's just a game platform. You still need the internet to download the game and play the game. So don't you think Stadia is going to be more oh, enticing? I think it's less enticing because people, like I said earlier, people don't have the internet capable all the time. You're not always online. A lot of people in rural communities don't, don't have the internet you need to stream all the time. Oh, so it's just of... an Xbox Live Pass, but for Apple. Yeah. It's I not mean, streaming. It's not streaming. I was under the impression it was streaming. No, it's not me. streaming. It's oh, okay. just it's like Game Pass, where it's you pay 10 bucks a month or whatever it is, and you get access to 100 plus games oh, for free. Uh, I was under the impression it's streaming. It's not streaming. I don't know. So they made a big point to say, you can download and play them offline. You can play whatever you want. And it was like, yeah, offline gaming, blah, blah, blah. So, so like the streaming is a harder sell because people are like I don't have twenty five megabits per second all the time, and so I don't want to pay for this. So, but anyway, I'm saying the install base is fucking huge. The money potential is huge, and that's why this is a big deal. But again, talking about streaming, we all talked about okay, music used to be you buy vinyl, then you buy CDs, then you illegally download it. Now we're streaming. All right, there was eight tracks somewhere. <laughs> <in between there. laughs> Video, you went to the movie theater. Where's the cassette? Bought your VHSs, DVD, Blu-ray. Now we're streaming. Games, we're finally getting there. Next year is the, or this year is the year of game streaming. It isn't going to work. And Google I said, I hope not. I just bought a new graphics card. <laughs> <laughs> uh, dude, honestly, that's honestly a thing. Like, right? If I can play every game on my phone, why would I need to buy a two thousand dollar PC? I mean, again, quality. But if the game is good enough on my phone, mm-hmm. the cost, the barrier to entry goes down exponentially. All right. So I've got. Some IT perspective. Yeah, give it to me. Um, so I, I watched most of the Stadia conference, or at least like a recap of it. Yeah. And network capability, Google's the best company to do that with. Like, yeah. they just have the data centers yeah. fucking everywhere. Yeah. They're Google. Yeah. So networking, I don't think it'll be as bad as you think. They recommended 25 megabits per second. Right. To get 60 FPS, 1080p. I think that is going to be an issue with just America in general has one of the worst fucking internet like setups ever. Yeah. Just it's just trash. Good Google Fiber. We, fiber Fiber needs to become more common. Yeah. A. B one of their main points to reduce latency was to host the servers on their in the same data center. Mm-hmm. So the idea was you talk to the game and the server in the same room. Or like vicinity right so yeah. you're, you're talking to only google yeah. so it saves you you're not going through the isp you're going straight to google i mean yeah but you still have to go to google yeah to the isp yeah so like that information was all bullshit so i think they're saying like you don't use the public internet you go straight to them so right but you still need the public internet to go to google yeah, so, so it was kind thing. of a lie yeah. uh the thing i this goes back to the fragmentation thing with that being true they would need to spin up the, and I don't know exactly where, like, let's say Call of Duty, they have dedicated servers, yeah. at least to my knowledge, and PUBG has dedicated servers. I would hope Apex does. So they they pay a company to host their servers, or they host them themselves. Yeah. I don't know how much of Google's data centers host servers in general, 
But the issue that I see is, let's say I'm on Stadia and you're on Xbox or whatever, and we're playing Fortnite because that's on all platforms. Yeah, they said they're totally down for cross uh, platform. Right, and exactly. They're yeah. down for cross play. Yeah. Here's the issue: where does that server go? Yeah. Because if their main argument for latency, especially multiplayer games, that's the thing I'm most worried about. Yep. Yeah. Um, you don't know where that server is going to be with crossplay. If it's on Google, that gives you an advantage over the Xbox player. Yeah. You know, and they'd all have to be on the Google server for that same equal amount of latency, or like at least the same chance, right? Yeah. So if you're streaming a game and the server is somewhere from another company, let's say it's like Epic Games' data center, I don't know if they have one. Mm, Just saying if it's, if it's their data center, you have to A, stream the game, then it has to hop to the server, tell you it's doing it, go back to the streaming service, go back to you, go back to your input. Yep. That's a lot of latency in the internet. Well, and then their fix to that is their controller, right. theoretically, which doesn't connect to your device. It connects directly to the data center via Wi-Fi, so there should be less latency. But yes, I agree with you. Multiplayer but is going to be a bitch. That's <laughs> another disadvantage, I would argue, especially like shooters. Mouse and, I want a Wi-Fi mouse and keyboard that'll connect to the data center. Yeah. I don't want a Wi-Fi. You guys play it on a computer though, in a browser. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah, I guess yeah, I guess that's that's a good answer. But I don't Thank know. I, I see issues. I don't think that it could. I still think that it could be solved in some way. Mm -hmm. I still think it's gonna happen. Yeah. I just think we're our infrastructure isn't there yet. Yeah. And there's a lot of other like small things that just have not been thought out just yet. Yeah. I think. Single player games will be good. Oh yeah, and initially. I think that'll be completely fine. Yeah, but yeah, multiplayer is gonna be. I'm one hundred percent excited to be able to like leave my computer, go like you know I'm I leave a lot you know mm -hmm. on the weekends to be able to like play on my phone like I can play Apex with you guys on my phone. Yeah, theoretically. Yeah, like that would be fantastic. Mm -hmm. And like we're saying, like phones are getting better and better every year. If you get a bigger phone, like what's the and difference? That's, you know? And that, that's the other issue. Actually, my phone's the phone made for gaming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's a little bit carbon cool. Fucking Fortnite ads, dude. It's like, made you to also play have Fortnite. the issue of the Wi Fi cards in your phone. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the lower end Android phones don't have good Wi Fi cards. Um, there's different Wi Fi protocols. New ones are coming out that have higher bandwidth. Right now, I think we're at technically a gigabit, but that's never how it works. Mm -hmm. uh, because you have so much overhead and you're still like having a physical medium versus like invisible airwaves, it's going to be slower. Yeah. So you have to worry about that, especially with phones Yeah. and laptops. So, so my question to all, all of us is like, w are you guys interested in streaming game streaming? I mean, it's like Dave's saying, it's going to happen eventually. Who knows how soon it's actually going to work well, but it will eventually get there just like music out there, video got there. But once it does get there, are you guys interested? I think this is weird because we're starting to become that generation that we're the older one. Yeah. <laughs> right? So I kind of want to be that old guy that's like, I'm sticking to my computer, damn it. Yeah. Because yeah. I enjoy building my computer and like hooking mm -hmm. up and stuff. But I, I'm still going to keep it, I think, for multiplayer for quite a, quite a few years. Mm. See, as I'm, far as single player. The way, the, the way that I play video games is like, I pick one game, I like binge the shit out of it. And then I just move on to the next game. So I don't think that I'd be their target market. But what if you because play Witcher in class <laughs> on your phone? I won't. I won't. <laughs> Why would I want to do that? I'm paying for class. Okay, let's say you have an hour break in between classes. Like if you lunch break, right? I think that's the power of the Switch, though, personally. Like, it is. Is that portability. But everybody has a phone. Everybody has a Switch. I know, but I'm saying that's what makes the, the Switch so appealing is that mobility yeah. behind it. Like, yeah. I can play Breath of the Wild. Like when I first got my Switch... I yeah. fucking played it during lunch all the time because yeah. like I can play a full fledged game in my hands. And I yeah. think that's where it it comes down. That streaming has the biggest power because it's convenient. Yeah, you know, and it's mobile, and it's usually cheaper. Yeah. So I don't know. What about you, Joseph? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I, Joseph doesn't play that many video games, really. Yeah, I really don't, especially recently. Um. I'm I'm still very much a single player game yeah. type person. So like I don't know, I'd rather just have it on my PC. Again, I really like my computer. Yeah. I don't wanna see don't wanna I think get we're starting to meet those old people. Oh though. yeah. Where it's like, damn it. <laughs> yeah, <I'm laughs> This is the way we shit. did it for I don't know how many years. Yeah. 
but we're sticking with it. <laughs> I think the, the biggest appeal of it to me is the, the barrier to entry is so low. Oh, yeah. I can definitely see that. And that's exciting because there's a lot of people I know who can't play games just because their computer can't handle it. Well, we have, we have a friend to play Apex with. I won't say his name because we haven't talked to him before, but he has a Surface he plays on. Mm-hmm. Every time he tried to play with us and his game was just not working. Like, I think his hardware is like was just fucking up and he couldn't do it. But if you could just stream the game from yeah. a data center, it's already doing the computing for you. Boom. Yeah. I was just talking to a guy today who has a $120 computer that is a zombie machine that he got from like a seven-year-old computer. He has a 750 Ti he borrowed from a buddy. He found some shit like, I don't know, it's a fucking dumpster fire. Yeah. Frankenstein. But he's trying to play Devil May Cry 5 on it, and he mm-hmm. said it crashes because his computer is below spec. Yeah. Like, not having that error, like that, like even become like a thought in your mind. Mm-hmm. You can only pay, you can pay monthly, so. Theoretically, more people will be able to play because it's more affordable. Mm-hmm. And yeah. it's, it's way more available, like everyone's got a phone, everyone's got a TV. And I wonder... I- Okay, so for example, Apex, right? When that game came out, there was a lot of crashes due to graphic card graphics card issues. Mm-hmm. Did those issues go away with streaming? I mean, because they're no. competing against somewhere else. It's still development, man. Yeah, no, and I know, but it'd be less issues probably because they can control. They're doing all the it's all the same graphics card and CPUs. You could say they that with to PS4 to and Xbox that they still had issues. They didn't have as many issues yeah. as PC because PC just has more variables. Yeah. But PS4 was really bad for a while. I'm just saying, like, I think that would help developers a lot. I think so. I mean, you see... Standardization always. You see all the time... It's the same way, like, why Snapchat is so much better on iPhones than it is on Android. Because you've got the standardization of how many iPhone model iPhones are on the market, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And then how many model Androids are on the market. So, yeah, once you standardize whatever the uh, machine is, then... I mean, we've even even seen it with... uh, Batman Arkham Knight, I think, was the game. Yeah. Uh, when you have it on PS4 and Xbox, especially in the middle of their life cycles, or like the, it's pretty stable, mm-hmm. they get the 30 frames or whatever. They know exactly what they're dealing with, but they make a PC port and it runs like dog shit. Yeah. But, yeah Assassin's Creed games are yeah. classic examples of garbage PC yeah. ports. That yeah. being said, at the end of their life cycles, the PS4 and Xbox start struggling really hard. I played God of War on a stock PS4, mm. and it, for the most part, ran fine, but there's a lot of particles in that game. Yeah. And during the busy parts, it would drop super bad. And like, if that was on a PC with higher-end hardware and it was scaled for it, like you have to develop mm. for that scaling. Yeah. Uh, mm. But if it, if it is, like, it'll kick its ass. Well, that's what Google is promising to developers. You don't have to scale anymore because we have right. 14 teraflops or whatever. Like we get, It's better can, than the Xbox One X. Yeah, and the PS4 Pro combined. Like It's ridiculous. You have yeah. so much more computing power at your disposal. You don't have to compromise. I think that would also help graphics yeah. because you could easily argue that consoles are holding back graphics because like we were saying earlier, like PS4 and Xbox went out for I don't know how fucking long. Yeah. A long ass time. So like they have to wait to develop heart better graphics mm-hmm. until the new one comes out and PC just waits like we already have the compute power on our computers to out, like you know to get to that next level yeah we're just waiting for the next generation because no developer is going to only make a PC game when like you were saying about how many PS4s there are they can sell to that and the Xbox player base and the PC player base yeah it's all about the money man yeah they gotta wait yeah all right, so closing thoughts quick. Are streaming services good or evil? <laughs> I'd say they're good. I think, especially like how I grew up, I'm not used to streaming. I'm not used to like the internet nearly as much as other people. <laughs> it's a farm boy. <laughs> yeah, I, yes. You know, so I, I mean, looking at how... Because I remember trying to play... Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 online. Mm. Oof. (laughs) And man, was that a struggle. Rubber banding just all over the place. Couldn't even play a damn match. Yeah. And like, that's the reason why I I don't play games nearly as much. And I only play single players mostly when I can. Mm -hmm. You know, it's because I just couldn't growing up. And I, and I, today, it's the same internet, you know, at my house. And you know, my neighbor has the same internet that they had. Like, it's... There's always going to be areas... I, mean, I shouldn't say always. There's still areas where the internet's not reliable. Yeah. And that really hinders them. Yeah. But, I mean, most people aren't growing up in that situation. So... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, we, I, I think it's probably more than you think. 
Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, especially in the middle of America. Uh-huh. Yeah, but it's not a majority of people. Yeah. Yeah. I think oh you're looking at me yeah I think overall it's they're they're good but like I said I worry about the fragmentation yeah uh, but I think I mean you got 5G coming out uh, you got better Wi-Fi protocols uh, technology advances in a forward direction typically mm-hmm. <laughs> I think it everything that you worry about for um, bandwidth wise it's it's gonna it'll catch up and yeah. just you have to wait for that technology to develop and I think we'll see it grow more and more same with cloud computing. It's just going to keep getting bigger. Mm-hmm. It's more convenient. It's cheaper. So It's easier. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah I, think it's, I think it's net good. Yeah. There's some downsides. Yeah. As with anything. Mm-hmm. No, it's only good. <laughs> no bad sides. <laughs> I think the only things I'm worried about are, yeah, fragmentation. Uh, infrastructure seems to get better, obviously. Legislation I'm worried about a little bit. Really? Because I feel like People in the government don't understand it <laughs> very well. Dude, and people in government laws. don't understand shit. I know. Because, like, net neutrality is a perfect example. We want to get into that. But, I mean, oh my that God. sucks. That'll be another two hours. I'll still yeah. be talking. So, I think that could be an issue. Um, I, I just, I do wonder, though, if gaming, game streaming will be the thing that pushes kind of cities to build better infrastructure. Like, will that get popular enough where people find, like, okay, let's build... That might probably always be gaming in of itself, but that plus, you know... I know you got businesses, too. Productivity, yeah, business productivity. Market has municipal Wi-Fi. Yeah. But it's just, like, things like that move so goddamn slow. Like, it takes so long to change Well, it's the physicality like behind it, what yeah. it comes down to. Yeah, because you got to put in so many different things, but mm-hmm. it'll get there. I mean, like Bill said, it's just a matter of time. And I'm curious to see what the kind of the next thing is after streaming, if there isn't another thing. If we all just have chips in our bodies and we just, you know, beam down everything at some point. From the Air satellites. memes <laughs> to each other's eyeballs. Yeah. <laughs> Dude. I'd See in our that. HUD. Dude, honestly, I'm, I put a chip in me right now. If Google becomes Skynet, I'm down for it. Put a chip in my wrist. <laughs> what if you become iRobot, you know? You know I'm, just, I'm down. Also, I don't want a, a fucking Become chip. iRobot? Yeah, like, I don't know, like he all of a sudden it's mind controlled by Google. You know, they like tell him to kill people. Yeah, An iRobot? I think they'd have better people to choose than Jacob. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Are you, thinking of, are you thinking of Mr. Robot? No, the one with Will Smith. Yeah, it's iRobot. The robots go bad and start, they turn, their eyes go from blue to red. Yeah, but <laughs> he's not controlling people. Well, I know, but I was just, Okay, I was just off. super confused <laughs> by what you... Like, like what if it's like that? Cyberpunk or if I want to pay for something I plug my chip in, you know? Yeah, a little thing my but my finger just pops out and it's plugging into everything. Yeah. How but how easy would it be to steal money though? You know it'd be I mean? way harder because it'd be my body. You can't rip it out of me. I I, mean, I beg to differ. <laughs> I'm sure you this thing called a knife. <laughs> <laughs> it'd be harder than stealing a wallet. Yeah, when it'd be a little bit more gross. I don't think it'd stop people. <laughs> I also think Apple revealed like some sort of credit card today that like doesn't have a CVV and doesn't have like a number on it. It's just a chip. I don't know. I don't look into it. But that sounds like a terrible idea. I don't know. Supposedly it's more secure. Bullshit. Of course it is. Well, that's our podcast. If you have any thoughts on streaming, let us know. I think we're all pretty pretty down for it, but yeah, we're forgetting anything. We're like not so. very diverse. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, we're, we're all pretty uh, interested in tech stuff, so, mm-hmm. you know. But I think it's a, it's a cool thing to think about for the future, so. Thanks for listening. Uh, again, you can find us on uh, Twitter and Instagram at EWF Podcast, and you can find us on Spotify, iTunes, and SoundCloud for your listening pleasure. Uh, we'll see you next week. Yeah, so stream us while we talk about (laughs) streaming. Yeah, stream us. (laughs) See you later.